Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 map guide. Today we're going to take a look at Hutan Pantai. This is a base game map that is included with the game Farming Simulator 25. But before that, this video is brought to you by Bobby W and Gaming with Dark Fang. Thank you for being farm barons. So Hutan Pantai has been released as part of Farming Simulator 25, and therefore it is available on all platforms that Farming Simulator 25 is available on. That would be PC, Mac, PlayStation 5, and Xbox One Series X and S. Now when we load into the map for the very first time, we do start here at our main starting farm. This map includes three farms. They are here, located at Farmland ID 27, and that can be bought in any alternate game mode if you have that you do not own the whole the main farm at the start for $115,392. In addition, if we do own the starting farm, we also have farmland ID 28, 30, and 31. So we start out with three rice fields ready to harvest and then two other fields for other crops. Now in addition to that farm, we have another farm that's located here at farmland ID 4 that you can buy for $480,696. And then there's one more farm available on this map, and it's gonna be located up here at Farmland ID 60 for $207,456. Now we take a look at the PDA itself. This is a standard sized map. And as such, it is a two kilometer by two kilometer map. We are using the majority of this map for agriculture, although there is a fair bit of forestry as well in the mountainous regions. Something that I think you're gonna find with this map is an interesting mix of flat farmland and mountainous region that can be used for forestry. As a result of being within the base game, this map is of course being available with all 25 of the standard crops in Farm Sim 25. We also have the base game growth calendar or crop calendar that you get with FS25 also available to us. None of the starting farms have any animals. So if you do want to do animals, you will need to put down your own animal pins. Of course, we have contracts available on this map. And with respect to productions, we own a greenhouse for rice saplings at the main farm, as well as a mushroom greenhouse at the main farm. Mushrooms are going to require water, and that's it. And then greenhouses for rice saplings. The rice saplings are also just going to require water. Now, as far as other productions that are available on this map, we have a bakery that is pre-placed for bread and cakes. We also have a biogas plant. We have a canning factory that will, of course, do canned peas, jarred green beans, kimchi, noodle soup, noodle soup with rice flour, preserved fruit, preserved fruit for beetroot, carrots, and parsnips. We have rice cakes in long grain rice or regular rice, and then bags of rice or long grain rice and bags of spinach. Our carpentry is gonna be able to produce furniture from either wood planks or long planks. We have a grain mill that will produce flour from barley, oats, sorghum, and wheat, or rice flour from long grain rice and regular rice. We have our oil mill, which will produce our normal three oils, canola, olive, and sunflower, as well as rice oil from either rice or long grain rice. Our sawmill will produce planks in two varieties, either long or normal, prefab walls, as well as wood beams. We also have a spinnery that will produce fabric from cotton or wool. And of course, we have a sugar mill on the map that will either produce sugar from sugar beet cut, sugar beet, or sugar cane. Now, as far as our cell points go, I counted the cell points. There's approximately eight different cell points on this map. As far as our starting fleet goes, we start out with a decent listing of starting machinery. We are also going to have the Izeki Harvester and Izeki Rice Planter, since this is a rice predominant map, of course. Everything is fairly well maintained, although it could be can maintain a little bit better. It's all owned, none of it is leased, and everything does have a fair bit of operating hours as well as age to them. We don't start out by owning any hand tools on this map, and we do have 25 collectibles. Those 25 collectibles in the XML are named balls, and it appears that we're gonna get approximately $10,000 each. 
Now, one thing to note is on this map, we do have, as I believe I've already mentioned, our neighbors. So we have our NPCs in Walter, Ben's right across the way over there, as well as Kate and Noah. So as such, we found already with respect to Riverbend Springs, this building, because it's where Walter is, this building is going to be permanent. It is our farmhouse. We do have a sleep trigger. We also have a wardrobe trigger around the corner, but this is going to be tied to Walter, and therefore it's going to be permanently a part of the map. In addition, since this is going to be tied to Ben, this building is also permanently a part of the map. The rest of the farm, though, for the most part, can be sold. We have our mushroom greenhouse and our mushrooms are going to spawn here on the right side and around the back is where we're going to be able to supply the water our rice sapling greenhouses are just over the hill there and again we're going to be able to provide water and we get pallets of rice saplings we do have a few other deco sheds available to us like this one right here and a couple garden sheds over there a small shed for our harvester to be parked at. And here we have our rice planter. We have three rice patties or rice fields already ready to harvest here around the back of the farm. First one is here. And then the next two are down a slightly lower level. We have one there. And then one terraced over here. The other farm or the other fields that we own are going to be across the street. This one right here, which is in a cultivated state, it looks like. We have our farm silo. And then the other field that we own at the start is going to be around the front of the building. So our starting farm is located right here, basically to the southwest corner of the map. And then farm two that we're going to take a look at is here located at farmland ID four. We do have a farmhouse associated with that as well as a silo complex. We have a fuel tank, and we also have another greenhouse. This time it is associated with other crops, so it's going to be a standard greenhouse. It's going to support your, your chilies, your garlic, your spring onions, your cabbage, your lettuce, tomatoes, and strawberries. So we have our farmhouse, which is located here. We've got a nice barn. The farm silo, then that greenhouse, and some more sheds. And then this field is going to be also tied to that farmland. Then the third farm is going to be continuing up diagonal to the map, and it's going to be located here at farmland ID 60. Now, what's interesting about this is the silo is going to be permanently a part of the map. I'm not really sure why, but we can't sell this. And it does show up as a tipping point, even if we don't own this land. We do have a lime silo here as well. We have a fuel point. We have our farmhouse and a couple outbuildings and sheds. And then we also, here on this farmland, we have a small sawmill right here. So we do have a little bit of production that is also included with this third farm. Now, with respect to cell points, there are multiple cell points on this map. And I've come back to the starting farm just to give everyone a little bit of a frame of reference as to where we are at. Again, we're in the lower southwest portion of the map. And the first cell point that I want to take you to is going to be a restaurant that is up here on the hillside village. So you see this is basically directly north of the starting farm. And the restaurant is pretty much at the top of the village. 
we have the dump station across the street from the restaurant itself. And what of you do you get from this hillside village? The next cell point we're going to talk about is going to be the animal dealer. Which is basically to the east of the restaurant. And from here, we're going to have a dump point for our bales. We're going to have a buy point for our manure. We're also going to have a buy point for slurry and lime. Then we're going to have our activation point to purchase our animals right over here by Kate, the NPC. The next cell point is going to be located right here, just south of the animal dealer. And on the PDA, it is named the Grain Elevator. I'm not quite sure how to get now, while not a cell point, we might as well talk about this because it's up here in this general vicinity anyway. And that's going to be the Temple Complex. So the Temple Complex is going to be this map's big construction mission. And when I say big construction mission, well, I mean absolutely massive construction mission. There are over 50 building stages involved in building out this temple complex. And I did my best to count up the inputs and how much of each input is going to be needed. And this is what I got. 414,000 liters of planks. 474,000 liters of wood beams. 54,000 liters of cement. 96,000 liters of roof plates and 12,000 liters of boards. Now, you may remember from our talk about productions that this map doesn't include all of those productions. So you're going to have to build your own productions in order to, in order to do some of this building work. For example, as far as productions built into the map, and we're going to get to that section here in a minute, we have a bakery, a BGA, a canning factory, carpentry, grain mill, oil mill, sawmill, spinnery, sugar mill, and then of course we had the rice greenhouse and the mushroom greenhouse. So we do have a fuel point down here. It also includes a electric charging station. And the next set of cell points we're going to talk about is basically toward town here. Just like Riverbend Springs, we have a warehouse, and the warehouse is both a sell point and a buy point. So we have a drop-off point here for some of our products. And then inside, we have the spawn point for products that we can buy, and we have the activation trigger. We also, if we want to, could rent a train from here. Now, maybe you didn't watch the Riverman Springs map tutorial, so you don't know what you can buy at this warehouse. So sit down, because it's going to be quite the list. We can buy planks, long planks, prefab walls, wooden beams, fabric, clothes, cement bags, barrels, buckets, bathtubs, furniture, carton rolls, paper rolls, wool, eggs, honey, flour, rice flour, bread, cakes, butters, cheese, sugar, cereal, sunflower oil, Canola oil, olive oil, rice oil, raisins, grapes, chocolate, strawberries, lettuce, tomatoes, spring onion, Napa cabbage, chili peppers, garlic, enoki, oyster mushroom, potato chips, preserved food, carrots, parsnips, and red beets. Canned peas, cement brick, spinach bags, jarred green beans, rice bags, rice boxes, roof plates, rope, goat milk, bottled milk, goat milk bottled, buffalo bottled milk. Mozzarella cheese, goat cheese, rice rolls, 
kimchi, noodle soup, triple soup, carrot soup, parsnip soup, red beet soup, and potato soup, and then back to our planks. So while we talked about how the things that need to be built or need to be brought to the temple in order to build the temple out, not everything is available on this map to produce without putting your own productions down. We could buy the stuff in, but that's going to cost you an absolute fortune for the quantities that we're talking about. Now we were right here with respect to the warehouse and now we've made our way down the ridge into our big city complex for the dairy. So the dairy cell point is directly in front of us here. We don't have a dairy production on the map, just a dairy cell point. Now the spinnery is listed here. The spinnery is flagged as a cell point, but it's really a production as opposed to simply a selling point. We're gonna have to come up and over these city buildings now in order to get to our farmer's market, which is a really, really cool setup. So here we have the farmer's market. And if we come in the farmer's market, well, we can basically progress through here and I just get envisions of seeing people tossing fish around because I've seen videos about the fish markets in these big Asian cities. So that's, that's what the vibe that I get here. Now, of course, people are going to comment about the lack of pedestrians. And I feel from the blog post that we had related to Putan Pantai is that this was a concession that had to be made in order to have good performance across all platforms that Farm Sim 25 is released upon. If we had a whole lot of pedestrians through here and a whole lot of traffic through here, it's just going to be more and more for the game to render, uh, especially with all of these animations on the neon lights and such, that performance would really suffer. Now, with respect to where are we on the map? Well, there you can see the second farm we talked about. Our starting farm is over on the other side of that ridge. And then the third farm is going to be off in the distance, approximately where the uh, center circle is located. And then, of course, the temple is going to be off in that general direction. Then the one other cell point that exists here on this map is going to be this big barge ship. So we have to come out here to this concrete island. And then we're going to have a dump point right there. And it's going to, in theory, offload here to this large barge. That's where we're going to have our main grain cell points. Now, as far as productions on this map, I mentioned there's a bakery. It's a really nice bakery here in the rural section of the city. Right here, we have Robin's Bakery. So we have our spawn point to the left, we have our dump point to the right, and we have our interactive icon there at the front door. We have our sugar mill, which is located right here. And we have our interactive icon here at the back door. We have our dump station and our spawn point. Right across the street from that, we have our oil mill. And for our oil mill, we have our dump point here in the back. We have our interactive icon there at the back door. And our oil pallets are going to spawn around the corner. I mentioned the spinnery is really a production. It's flied as a cell point. Well, we have our spawn point there for our fabric. We have our dump point there for our cotton and wool. And there we have our interactive icon. We also have a carpentry shop and that is located right here. So we have our spawn point, our dump point, and our interactive point to sell the wood. And then we have our interactive icon to manage the facility here at the front door. Then we're going to make our way over to the biogas plant. 
Something else that is obviously predominant on this map are going to be the elevated roadways and train lines. It really does make this map have a unique feel to it. So here we have the biogas plant. And this is a BGA that we've come to know and love. So we have our dump point, which is going to be here if we own the facility for our slurry. Our digestate is going to come out over here. And then we have two digesters. And then opposite the two digesters, we have two three-sided silage bunkers. So we've already talked about the temple complex, which would be right here to the right. We're just going to follow this elevated road a little bit more. And make our way over here to the flour mill. So we have our dump point. We have our interactive point here at the door. And then our flower pallets are going to spawn right here at the pickup and delivery point. We have our animal dealer. And then right up here. Well, this is where we're going to have our sawmill. The final production on the map. So we have our dump point here for our wood. We have our wood cell trigger there. There's Noah, our fearless lumberjack. And then we have our spawn point for our pallets right there. We have our interactive icon at this door by the brick building. And this shed, again, is going to be where we're going to sell our wood. And, folks, that's it. That is Hutan Pantai. Now, I'd love to know what your all's thoughts are with respect to this map. It is a very unique feeling map. That is for sure. We've got some tall, high mountainous regions to really just get up here and explore either with the motorbike. But I don't think the little Abe or the ape is going to be able to get up this high. We've got nice architectural things like this hillside village with these terraced rice patties in multiple places and then we come down here to this flat area and the flat area is where we're going to have a lot of our agriculture now I guess the one thing that we haven't talked about is going to be the vehicle shop which is right here so here we have the Hutan Pantai vehicle shop we have our dealer trigger And then around the side, we have our dealer buy trigger for our vehicles and machinery. But if you're really looking to get into some big scale agriculture on this map, then this center farm at Farmland 94 might be the best option. Because the other two farms are really going to be focused on more smaller size fields. Whereas right here, predominantly, we've got the biggest fields on the map right here around this particular farm so guys let me know once again what you think down in the comments below if you like this video then please by all means give it a like and please subscribe we are working our way to 50,000 subs before the official release of farming simulator 25 and we're oh oh so close so if you aren't subscribed it's not going to hurt just click give it a little click and uh see all the worst you're going to get are some notifications with respect to future content related to Farming Simulator 25. And there's going to be a heck of that going along as we continue to expand and update all of our how-tos and deep dives from Farm Sim 22 into FS25. As well as once we have mod maps dropping and other things where we're going to continue to provide that great content as we have before. Until next time, happy farming.